I think the first thing people want to know is who are you? Yeah, so uh, Eric Doden was born in Butler, Indiana, and I've had the privilege of serving at the state level uh, at the Indiana Economic Development Corporation. So this is actually my second time that I've done a 92 county tour. And um, it's been a really great experience so far. I met with about 2,500 leaders in 45 counties, and we'll get to the rest of them over the next six months here. What's your pitch? Well, I, I think for me, we, we, we have a couple things. Number one, we want to make sure that we protect the vulnerable. Uh, that means things like zero cost adoption. Uh, which Tim Wesco just introduced a bill um, that we've already seen some results from our efforts with zero cost adoption. So there's a bill that's been filed here, I believe today on that issue. And so we're excited about what that can do for families who are, um, are adopting uh, you know, children and, and who are trying to give them a loving home. And, uh, and then we also have things like the Indiana Main Street Initiative, which is really focused on the small towns that I grew up in, giving them an opportunity in the 21st century to be uh, economically um, uh, have economic growth and a chance for their kids and grandkids to live in those communities as well. And so those are some of the things that we're focused on as well as regionalism. We saw what can happen with uh, regionalism here in this uh, area with when South Bend and Elkhart came together and they, they did Regional Cities Initiative, which I was a part of with Mike Pence. And so those are the kind of things that we're emphasizing uh, as we travel the state of Indiana, as well as listening to what's the concerns on the, the hearts and minds of the people of Indiana. Well, at least at this point, what do you see as the number one pressing issue for Indiana going forward? Yeah, I think a very important issue is the attraction and retention of talent. You know, we have been a, a place that has, um, you know, jobs and we want to continue to have a job strategy, but we also have to have a place where we can attract and retain our talent and specifically our kids and grandkids. And I think that's going to be an important issue going forward. What do you think, and I've, I've read through some of your plans, what do you think is the number one plan that's going to address that? Well, I don't think it's you know, one single plan that will address it. I think it's a, a, a series of issues. Um, I think the emphasis we have on uh, even mental health and helping people uh, kick addictions, that's become an increasing uh, issue as we talk to people around the state of Indiana and making sure that we have good wraparound services that help people um, kick their addiction or, or handle their mental health issue and then become uh, productive again. So I think that's one important issue. I think another issue is to make sure that we have community pride throughout the entire state of Indiana. Uh, we can't be a place where just one or two or three or four communities are thriving. We have to be a place where all 92 counties are thriving. And we know the statistics that we have half of our counties are losing population in real terms. And, you know, that makes, makes it difficult to grow your economy when that's occurring. And some of the uh, projects that you've outlined, um, $100 million a year to fund revitalization of rural downtowns, $200 million a year for uh, Regional Cities Initiative 2.0, as well as making school teachers exempt from income tax. They sound like great projects, but also people would look at those and say subsidies. Do you think the legislature would be interested in those? Well, I think that they've already proven to work. It, we don't really view them as subsidies as much as a partnership with local leaders as they try to, you know, fix some of our, you know, systemic issues. Um, you know, as you know, we have a lot of um, older factories that have been left in disrepair. Uh, you know, the factories have moved on. Uh, we have uh, different things that need to be fixed and, and corrected. Plus, we have opportunities uh, such as, you know, in my hometown, the riverfront in Fort Wayne, so these are all unique projects that can attract and retain talent. And so um, th th we are going to spend about 600 million a year in economic development. And I'd prefer to use it as a, a investment to co-invest with the local leaders who want to transform their communities in a significant way. You were very involved in the initial regional cities initiative. Uh, why do you think the state just kind of let it disappear? Well, I, I think that, you know, they, they, they brought it back with ready. And, and I think that that was a, a really good nod to uh, what the, the success of the program was. And now they're going to do, they're already uh, putting in another uh, ready fund uh, in the budget. We saw another 500 million, I believe, that, that they're, they're advocating for in the budget. So I, I think there was um, a period of time where they were trying to figure out, you know, and watch it grow and how it, how it developed. And when it did develop in a really significant way, they were willing to put more money into the, that type of program. Under Mike Pence, one of his criticisms was always that he had strong economic policies that could sometimes be undercut by strong conservative social policies. Uh, do you think the next governor will have to play a role in reining back the state legislature in any way? 
I, I think you have to be authentic to yourself, and I, I've said that one of the key issues for me is protect the vulnerable. You know, I, for example, am ardently pro-life. I, I don't think it's just a religious issue. I think it's a human rights issue. And, uh, and I, but I also think that we also have to do things like zero cost adoption. So we have to, you know, provide, uh, you know, really loving homes for children that are struggling or, or, or have, you know, are at risk in some way. Uh, I just think we have to have really creative ideas that show that we generally care about people, we care about their future, and we're concerned about them, and that we have a, um, a way that we're going to do everything in our power to help them. Well, and to follow up on that, uh, a recent example would have been the recent abortion legislation under Holcomb. Uh, Eli Lilly even came out and said, this may cause us to expand outside of the state. Do you think oftentimes there are bills that are essentially going against what the economic agenda is for this for Indiana? Well, I think reasonable minds can have different opinions and I think one of the things that I enjoy about being a part of the United States and what we do here is that you can respect you know d people's different perspectives and but at the same time we also come together for you know what unites us and that's things like zero cost adoption that's things like fixing uh, communities that 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 we know that want to get better and improve and so we're going to focus on the things that really unite us to the best that we can. And, and you know, realistically, zero cost adoption, at least in the, in the public kind of square, has not been a controversial thing. Adoption has not been one of those hot topic, topic issues. Uh, do you think that the state government does need to rein back on some of those hot topic issues and where there have been lines drawn that have been the division points for businesses? Look, I, I think we just need to focus on the things, again, that we're going to uh, improve people's lives. And th those are ideas that you're going to see from me, are ideas that improve the lives of Hoosiers, make sure that we have a better place to live in the future. We're just focused on, the, you know, the next generation of leadership and where do we go over the next 20 years, and that's going to be the focus of my administration. And would it be accurate to say, I guess, if I'm kind of, uh, you know, looking at the broad, broad picture, that quality of place is, is kind of your focus? Yeah, I think um, quality of place, community pride. I think we, we're seeing just an increase in community pride across the state of Indiana where people are really falling in love with their community. I, I think that's just really important. Um, I, I think when uh, local leaders and, and local people fall in love with their community, you're heading the right direction. And I kind of measure that when I go to church on Sunday. If I have people coming up to me excited about the community, I know we're heading the right direction. Or when I'm in the barber shop. Uh, on Maplecrest, uh, there's another place where you can find out what people are really thinking about their community. And uh, I think it's just important to keep your ear to the ground and listen to people and, and, and see what are the issues that are important to them and then try to do your best you can to improve those areas that need to be improved. What do you make of your opponents? Um, look, I, I think they're great people. They're, they're friends of mine. Uh, I, I think they're going to be very different approaches, and I think that that's going to be evident to people as we get out there over the next 17 months. Is there anything in particular that you see as like the big, hey, you're choosing this or that when voters are considering who to go for? No, look, we're, we're just focused on um, our listening to Hoosiers. Our, our, we're focused on our vision for the state of Indiana. Uh, those are those are things that the Hoosiers can decide about the differences. But uh, you know, our focus is going to be really about good ideas, and then having a healthy debate over the next uh, 17 months about what what is the good ideas that can improve people's lives in Indiana. So you're a successful businessman. Why run? Uh, well, because I think that life is more than just you know being about business. You know, life is um, uh, you know we we are all called to do things at various times, and and when you're called to do something and you feel it's important to do, then you go do it, and that's the way that Macy and I choose to live life. Uh, and so we do enjoy the business side of things, but we also enjoy public service and serving other people, and this is just a part of that journey. Great. Final thought. I think we're good.